All right, let's move on to our next conversation. Um, is one that is sure to be riveting. Um, a conversation with Andrew Grauer and Michael Cohn. Andrew started his company Course Hero in his college dorm room at Cornell. And um, it has now grown into a significant platform called Learnio. Uh, and this is a story of, a, of great, uh, terrific growth and accomplishment that only Andrew can tell. So please help me to welcome Andrew Grauer and Michael Cohn onto stage. feel like Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> hello, 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 hello everyone. Hello, hello Andrew. Uh, hello. Anita, Anita, thank you for that wonderful introduction. As Andrew said, wow, she, uh, she took your thunder, which was fantastic because I know we only have a short amount of time and it allows me to get right into it with my dear longtime friend, Andrew Grauer. So for both of us, obviously, India's a long way from home. The last panel was just talked, was just referenced out of India. India is viewed as an exporter of, of ed tech, yet you're here. Million dollar question, why? Well, first of all, thank you to uh, GSV and uh, Emeritus for inviting me. This is my first time in India. So it's in, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's an incredible life experience for me and it's gonna be a moment that I remember for the rest of my life and um, I, I came here because I get to meet amazing entrepreneurs, uh, companies, and investors, and it's, um, it's something pretty special. Uh, we have not really had a presence in India um, until the last few years. And amazingly for Lernio now, maybe 150 of our full-time teammates in product development, and I'm talking uh, engineering, ML, product, et cetera, basically every single function is now here. Uh, and what an incredible evolution over the last 17 years um, from my perspective since we started Course Hero. Yeah. And before we talk about Course Hero and Learn Yield, so just as you said, it's been a whirlwind three days. I've seen you meeting with every entrepreneur here. Love to get your initial reactions. I, so I, I think my favorite way to look, about, look at any builder is, can you be a persistent and optimistic problem solver? I think if I were to look at every different iteration of the values that we've set for Course Hero or Learnio over the last 17 years, I, I, I could just paraphrase it, uh, those three things, persistent and optimistic problem solver. And I, I think, Deborah, you were referencing this yesterday in a number of different ways, maybe with regards to sleep. Uh, <laughs> and, and, however, I, 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 would, I would say that sleep is incredibly important. Uh, personally, uh, but I think it's off the charts. Uh, whether it's uh, persistent quotient, intelligence quotient, um, uh, I would say even empathy as well. I, I think those characteristics allow one to be creative, uh, allows you to stay in the game for a long period of time, and maybe we can talk about this yep. in a number of different contexts uh, throughout your questions, but the willingness to do the hard, small steps in the context of a longer-term vision is is so important. Uh, and if you can have that vision and if you can determine something that you believe will be true over a long period of time, then you can do the work that nobody else is willing to do uh, day by day, week by week, month by month, quarter by quarter, year by year. And I think that's maybe trite, um, but it's true. And it's easy to say, but in practice, I think relatively few people do it. Look, this is my first few days here. Um, I've been talking to quite a few people, not just in person, but virtually over the last few years, especially um, in India. And I think, I think that combination of ambition but willing to do the hard work in a good way is incredible. Uh, and I think it's a leading indicator of what's going to happen. Perfect. So, so let's just quickly transition. So. Lots of talk about this being India's moment, India's decade, India's century. 
We were obviously here because you think it's Lernio's moment. And we've been friends for a long time. We've been investors since 2010. I think we met you when you were in your dorm room, dorm room at Cornell. A year ago, or just over a year ago, we celebrated, you, we celebrated you and we joined you in sharing in your 15th year anniversary that coincided with your raising a 300-ish million dollar Series C from Sequoia and O'Mares and D1. Right after that, you completely changed things, right? In two years, your team has expanded from one business to six. Course Hero was named Fast Company's world-changing idea in education. You brought on the categories in which you work from higher ed to K-12 into now workforce and productivity. And you've also expanded the opportunities for those, for those that you serve. So for the audience today getting to know you for the first time or for those, of, for those of us in the room that still view you as the founder of Course Hero, talk about what Learnio is, where it's going, and how folks should be thinking about it. At the highest level, I, I think we have to start with a, a, a vision uh, and I think the vision is rooted in things that we believe to be true over a long period of time and that matter. And I think it has to do with helping people learn, helping people communicate, helping people do more, better, faster, and more affordably. And that is an incredibly broad and horizontal, if you will, mandate or vision. And then the question is, how do we structure ourselves uh, to be able to do the passionate and deep work on a lot of different details? Uh, and and that's, that's our history for, from, from Course Hero, which was uh, founded in 2006, was, for example, there in, in the business today, um, Course Hero is about helping any student ask and answer any question in any course, in any field of study in any school and growing by level, by geography, over time. And to do that, to get an accessible quality answer and explanation for each question, question by question, assessment by assessment, course by course, school by school, painful, uh, painful work. Uh, but you know that if you can do that over time, it can create a lot of value. And, and there's a, a couple of uh, characteristics of that that I, I think are actually quite valuable for uh, a, a number of different businesses uh, in, in, in here in India that are not serving just people in India, but also pe uh, serving people in other countries or globally. And that's if you can keep this cost structure relatively low, both on the supply side and on the demand side. And if you can do that, then you can create accessibility, right? You can get more access to higher value things or things that would not have been available at a lower cost. At the same time, effectively, if that translated into the marginal cost of acquisition of supply trends towards zero, and then also the CAC on the demand side trends towards zero, you have the opportunity to offer valuable things at a super low cost. That's a preference of ours when we are looking uh, at different businesses and products um, at Learnio, uh, because I think that is a wonderful combination of being able to serve people with more value and have a positive social impact while also having the opportunity to build a great business. Um, I think for us, what we really started out as is, you know, how do you help in course specific, school specific help, homework help, test prep help in a very specific way, not at standardized test level, but very, very specific. To translate today, I, I would use um, language of aggregation as powerful uh, because it's really about aggregating small units of supply and then making them available. You source it, you organize it, you disseminate it uh, as a system that is able to do that. Um, now Learnio, as we, we've expanded, Course Hero can remain focused on helping students enroll in courses and schools, while each business can now move up a level. For example, we've expanded into math as a topic, um, and we've expanded into reading, and we've expanded into writing. And what happens when we move to that level is the same sort of verbs modified by 
faster, better, more affordably. Help people read better, faster, more affordably. Help people write better, faster, more affordably. Help people do math better, faster, more affordably. And you could imagine that whether it's uh, uh, a new use case, a new market, a new job to be done, um, that's what we're going to be expanding and looking to do, both for students and at Learnio, we, we also are really interested in serving people who are non-students. Uh, and that's been a shift. And it was actually a market shift, if I could talk about Quillbot. Yep. Yep. Um, does anybody here uh, know and use Quillbot? Oh, fantastic. Uh, I think that's a particular product on the platform uh, that is, is growing in, in a huge amount of customer love, uh, both for students and for non-students. Um, 30 going on 40% of users are professionals, uh, non-students. And uh, a lot of people in India uh, are, are using it, including uh, in, in the US. And across the platform, by the way, today, we're now serving uh, about 100 million monthly active users. Uh, we're serving about 3 billion visits per year, or sessions per year. Uh, and there's about 3 million subscriptions. Perfect. And you talk, and you beautifully lay that out now on the Learn Your homepage. When you launched a new brand, there was this kind of broad manifesto and all things entrepreneurship. It talked about the fragmentation in the market that you were seeing. That ultimately, I think you encapsulated incredibly well with two words, better together, right? Better together, which to me, knowing you means building community, your community of educators that are, you know, a half million educators that are now on the platform with your tens of millions of learners. Better together, you added a team of CEOs to your management team, right? Each bringing their own expertise. We can talk about better together, recognizing that learning doesn't end when you graduate. To borrow a phrase from Michael Moe, autonomous learning, continuous learning, Kaizen EDU, expanding the product suite now to, to include the broader productivity applications, and having not only massive market share in the US, but also serving our global population here, we can also talk about what you think that means in terms of better together, US and India, as it relates to your core strategy. But let's talk a little bit just about your India strategy or your India user, right? And we were just talking about this outside, that for the past couple of days, we've been hearing, you know, India is different than the US. It's distribution-centric versus product-centric, right? It's transactional versus subscription. How are you all across the Learn Your platform thinking about the India user? How, how is she different? What's her DNA? How is she motivated? And how are you using that to drive your long-term strategy? Well, we need to constantly learn. I, one thing I was just thinking about was, um, we, we now have about uh, 300 billion sessions a year uh, across Learnio products um, in India, uh, users in India. Uh, now the conversion rate to a paid subscription is generally much lower uh, in India than it is uh, in the US, as an example. Uh, and I think I would posit that over the coming decade, th th that will change. Uh, and what I just realized in, it was uh, when we were starting Course Hero in 2006, uh, and even when we launched our subscription for the first time in 2008, and really scaled it in 2009, was there were very few digital e-commerce or subscription businesses. And the, the payment infrastructure was nascent. I'm talking seriously nascent. And I remember the first time people uh, subscribed uh, to get notes or study guides, uh, that first payment. I was mm -hmm. like, what? Mm -hmm. Versus uh, you know, having ads, because the first version was effectively, uh, the, the visual in our head was a, a Wikipedia. Uh, but instead of having an encyclopedic taxonomy, it was a course specific, course, ca you know, course catalog taxonomy. Uh, and that was a, a wow moment. Uh, and I, I think that will change mm -hmm. uh, quite dramatically over time. Mm -hmm. Perfect, so two follow-ups. First follow-up, and this is really just about just overall business building, and your journey is spectacular, it's unique, I wanna talk about it. Before we leave that point, given what you just said, who in the room, what type of entrepreneur, what type of founder, who would help you turbocharge your GTM in India? So uh, I, I know on everybody's mind is what is the impact of LLMs over the, you know, the, the coming year and years. Uh, and uh, it might seem like a non sequitur, but I, I usually have thought about like how do you compound 
value in, that, in, in a way of a vector that you think is durable over time. And I think more than ever, uh, the only way that one can think about that, it, uh, given the likely speed at which we're gonna roll out to GPT-4 plus N uh, here, uh, is a deep understanding of people's needs, problems, use cases, in solving for it. And that's the only thing. And so that you're gonna need uh, an understanding of the user, a way to do that effectively, and a way to execute against it in an effective way repeatedly. Uh, so I think that does show up for us, generally speaking, um, when we've been making investments. At this point, it's, it's um, fully controlled acquisitions where it's a split between cash and equity, depending on, on what reflects what we're trying to accomplish together. Mm -hmm. um, Usually there's something that indicates product market fit and hopefully moving towards expansion phase. Right. Uh, and, and, and that is almost like a litmus test or, or, or some set uh, of, of metrics that reflect an understanding that you could help somebody read better, faster, more affordably. Uh, you could help somebody write better, faster, more affordably. You, you could help somebody communicate better, faster, more affordably. And that, I think, it, it, there's gonna be things that are universal truths uh, at, at the same time, maybe we can even just reflect on uh, sessions versus conversion rate to subscriptions uh, geographically. Mm -hmm. There's probably mm -hmm. differences. So, so how do you localize? How do you understand different markets? And what are the nuances? What, what could you keep the same as variables? Uh, and what do you actually need to change? Yep. So you opened the door, so I'm going to knock it down. Chat GPT. Where are, where, where are you on it? What do you think about it? Where is it today? Where do you think it's going? How does that impact your entire stack? Well, the most important first response, the only thing I know to be true uh, so far, is got to serve the customer better. We're gonna have a massive increase in productivity as a result mm -hmm. um, of LLMs. Uh, and and um, I think the reality is it's, it's going to happen faster than one thinks. Mm -hmm. and, and I usually think things take longer uh, than um, uh, other people. Uh, I think things are going to move fast. Right. Um, and I think in our position, I think building an incredible brand that is loved, I think needing to innovate on different UI, UX experiences for very specific customer use cases or clustered sets of customer use cases is something that one is going to need to do if you are a vertical solution mm -hmm. as opposed to something that is relatively more horizontal. Uh, that is a little bit uncomfortable yep. uh, because that's going to be in and by little bit, I mean very uncomfortable. For everyone. Uh, for, for everybody. Uh, and, you know, you're, you're, you're going to have a lot of things that are likely to centralize um, at the compute level, uh, like has happened at the storage level and things like AWS. So I think, you know, whether you're a Google or you're a Microsoft um, or a Facebook, you have a huge opportunity um, to work at that level. Who should be working at the foundational model level? Um, that's a question, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the amount of time that you allocate to doing that at the R&D um, budget level to then potentially be obsolesced in a short amount of time by another model is a real risk. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need, basically the advantage there is there's cash capital is an advantage mm -hmm. um, for different parts of the stack. Uh, and, and then as you, you, you go to distribution, um, I, I think a lot about um, Distribution uh, it, it ultimately uh, should be, hopefully, a, a function of value to the customer. Mm -hmm. um, but when you look at the stack of distribution, uh, you know we, we often talk about how do you play and distribute through a platform like a Google uh, or an Amazon or a YouTube um, or word of mouth or email, or and then you could start to think about different um, devices. So you could be thinking about uh, how do I exist within different applications? How do I exist within different devices? Um, then the question is, you know, 
when do I actually need to create and launch and distribute a device? Uh, the, you know, the, the more you want to say, I want to have a direct relationship with my customers, my users that I serve. And I think ultimately, the more one can be product-led and have direct relationships with the people you serve, with the people that we serve, the better. Uh, and and you, I think that's an opportunity statement. It's a problem statement, it's an opportunity statement, because a lot of different platforms you could potentially think about what yep. will be natively integrated into that device or to the app uh, that currently is not. Uh, and uh, whether you're thinking about um, organic search, whether you're thinking about um, native mobile apps separate from desktop web and mobile web, whether we're thinking about uh, 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 extensions, uh, whether we're thinking about push notifications, email, et cetera. These are um, relatively low marginal cost of um, uh, 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 low marginal variable cost of delivery channels. Uh, th those are powerful ones that also reflect potentially more direct relationships that would be less disintermediated uh, um, than others. Okay, and I'm gonna jump in, and I see, I see I'm see, i getting the eye, but I'm gonna t tell you guys to wait because I know that there's a break coming up next. I see time's up, eh, it's okay. So, really important question, particularly for the folks that are in the room. We heard yesterday, as Sandeep Singh was saying, that the party right now is over, the party's gonna start again. Capital is cheap, now it's not. Now it's, it's focused on value, not valuation, it's a focus on outcomes, it's product versus distribution, and ultimately getting to profitability. You've achieved significant scale, significant valuation, significant impact, significant fundamentals, both in terms of your top line and bottom line, really with a goal on profitability. For the folks in the room, how did you, you know, in a you know, minute, what were the guiding principles from day one? How did you embark on that journey? If you were to give these folks guidance around how you build a sustainable business from day one, how do you do it? Well, well first you have to care. Uh, that that is important. And it's a combination of optimizing for both sustainability and growth. And, and I guess you, you referenced a form of sustainability is cash flow or, or profitability. Um, uh, but things that don't go to zero. And uh, I think, uh, generally speaking, if you can um, survive and be going generally in the right direction over a long period of time, uh, and, and call it closer to seven, eight, nine, ten years in your mind, and you can use time as an advantage, uh, th that is powerful. Uh, because uh, I, I think going on 110% uh, energy f for two to three years, so many people burn out. Um, but actually, so much of the value creation at an absolute level is created after that. Um, so maybe the last thing I, I would say is... When I think about the next 10 years for us and being better together, I love the ability to optimize in, for the details. Um, and I'll give an example um, for Symbol Lab, an amazing math solver and graphing calculator. Their biweekly sprints are about adding or improving a calculator like an integration calculator. Something that is horizontal, like a course hero, would never be able to prioritize that sort of detail. As a platform, in partnering with people who are deeply passionate about helping in a particular area, whether it's reading, writing, or math, whether it's language, whether it's uh, some form of communication or productivity, I love the ability to go so deep into the details of creating so much value, but then not having the FOMO of going broad. And so Learnio, at this point, is hoping to be able to go broad but be able to build with amazing entrepreneurs and be energized, being able to be passionate and continue to go deep in a particular vertical. Perfect. Andrew, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much, Andrew. That was fantastic. I hope the entrepreneurs got that. Use time as your ally. Go deep. Focus. It's all back to the fundamentals. As long as we could focus and stick with that. Well, we actually have a break, but I want to finish my announcement about the ticket. I just wanted to also say that these, we're, we're doing the drawing at the end of day today. So if you want to win the prize, please be here at the end of the day after our last session and, um, and then we'll announce 
the winner. Thank you. We're, we're going to break till about 10.55 now.